the format change? <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, last two days, we, uh, there are our workshops on the second floor. And uh, we uh, today will we will uh, talk about uh, neon EVM economy, e economics. Um, if you don't know, neon EVM is the Ethereum virtual machine for Solana. It can execute the Ethereum-like transaction on the Solana and uh, stores data on the Solana state. Uh, today with me, Brian, he will tell you about how to configure the proxy for the neon EVM. Brian. Hi, everybody. Um, uh, this is kind of fun, actually, because we were supposed to be upstairs doing a technical workshop. Um, and uh, now here we are in front of all of you. Uh, instead of changing the presentation, this is still a technical workshop. It's just a really big one. And um, a part of a technical workshop is a lot of question and answer. And in this case, it's your job to ask the questions and our job to answer. So um, if you would, please feel very comfortable, raise your hand, uh, try to get my attention, um, and feel free to ask questions at any point along the way. So um, let's see, let's see if we have better luck. Jordan, that works great for me. <laughs> um, uh, who am I? Uh, we are here to support Neon EVM. Uh, we are a uh, Triton One is an RPC services provider. Uh, myself personally, I'm one of the original validators on Solana, uh, back from the uh, dry run days uh, before testnet and before mainnet. Uh, I also run validators.app, which is a website about validators. And then uh, one uh, third partner in Triton One, uh, we're an RPC services and infrastructure provider. Um, the bottom bullet here, you can find me on Telegram and on Twitter at Brian Long. And uh, if you do follow me on Telegram, find me afterwards and uh, we'll do an Aussie. Um, it's not a selfie because there's more than one person. It's an Aussie. So come find me and we'll do that. Um, the, the, the technical workshop is really what does it take to become a Neon node operator? And uh, so for anybody who's interested in participating in Neon, earning fees for processing Ethereum transactions. And the, uh, uh, so there's uh, this, this concept that you know, you'll have a, a Neon node, and then you also need an RPC server. Um, and the two of those together kind of form the, uh, what is required to, uh, to run uh, a Neon proxy in, in, in completion. Um, one thing that you'll want to be aware of if you're thinking about this is the RPC component of this don't use a public server, don't use a shared server. You want something that you have control over. And um, I, kind of in parentheses on the end, I said to avoid rug pulls. Um, you, you need to think like an attacker, right? Um, that when you're processing an Ethereum transaction on Solana, it gets cut up into several little pieces and the fees are paid along the way. But at the end is kind of the final big payment, right? So what could happen is if an attacker wanted to pull your rug, what they would do is they would interfere with your RPC server. Uh, they would make it kind of impossible for you to complete the task. And then one of the other competing node operators could then swoop in, finish the task for you, and steal your fees. Um, the, uh, so that's just super important, right? We want to make sure that you've got a secure environment, uh, make sure that you've got control over your RPC node. It's not available to, uh, on the, to the public. Um, the, uh, you certainly could run with a third-party provider. You just want to know that they've got secured your node for you and uh, that it's not just an open shared node. So, any questions? No, okay, all right, we'll keep going. Um, the requirements, pretty basic. Uh, the, Neo, the EF, Neon EVM proxy itself just requires four cores, 16 gig of memory. That's not a lot, right, uh, by today's standards. That's pretty manageable. The RPC node, on the other hand, there's a significant requirement. And um, on the Solana website, if you've seen the recommendations for running a validator or for running an RPC node, the, um, it'll say 128 gig. 
I, that's too small. You need, you need more. Um, 256 gig is what I recommend here. Um, if anybody's been watching Testnet recently, um, Testnet is designed to be attacked, by the way. So don't, you know, it's, it's intended to be attacked. And um, one of the recent attacks, uh, the, attacker the attacker went after the low RAM nodes. So basically, they were trying to take down any validator with 64 gig of RAM. And they succeeded. Um, so again, thinking defensively, thinking about how to be robust and resistant against an attack. Don't come in thinking that you're going to do a low spec node, um, that your server needs to be probably up at least 256 gig. The, um, oh, I've got it down here. Uh, 16 cores minimum. Uh, AMD Epic has been performing the best for us. And uh, in particular, moving on to Gen 3, the, the new stuff that's just hitting the market right now. Big performance improvements. Uh, you can get by with uh, AMD Gen 2 uh, without too much of an issue. But if you, if you have access to Gen 3, go for it. Um, and some of the technical things uh, to think about is uh, you want to be able to isolate processes on certain cores. And the uh, Solana proof of history runs uh, a process. Uh, if you're not familiar with proof of history, it's the magic that makes Solana what it is. It's the magic that makes Solana fast. And uh, it's how the validators are able to keep uh, everything in sync between the nodes, how we know that one transaction actually arrived before another transaction. And uh, that particular process requires its own core. So um, you'll need to know that you've got the Linux admin skills to be able to isolate cores to certain processes um, and move things around on the CPU. The um, other things to know about is uh, you'll be managing things with tempfs, uh, which is uh, basically holding it in memory. Um, you're going to use NVMe drives. You are going to replace them every six months. Um, uh, Solana eats NVMEs for breakfast. And um, so I, you know, I'd suggest having some sort of alerts or notifications that will let you know if you're about to burn out an NVMe, NVME you know, the health check. Um, so my goal with this slide was just to kind of set expectations, right? Don't, don't think that you're going to do this on the cheap. Don't try to do it with uh, you know, an at-home uh, PC, an old gaming PC in your basement or something like that. This is going to take a data center style commitment. So, oh great, awesome, thank you. Can I get a hot mic? Okay, thanks. Yep. Hey, uh, thanks a lot for explaining anything. Um, I'm taking the time to maybe ask a question like, why is the Solana IPC node so high in requirement? Um, if you can get like a small hint or like explanation, that will help for further research. Yeah, yeah, great. So um, a, a Solana RPC node is a validator. And it has the query layer to, uh, to service queries that'll be coming in from the Neon proxy. And um, uh, the validator requirements are very high uh, because you're keeping the entire account state in RAM um, and you're processing so many thousands of transactions per second, right? Um, so it, it really is just the, the requirements of being a validator are really that high. And then you add on top of that the query component. So um, does that help? Does that answer? Okay. All right. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Prerequisites. Uh, deploy or host. Um, I, I'm going to skip some of this stuff. It might be a little bit too technical for the crowd. Um, what we can do is we can come upstairs if, you, if anybody wants to kind of dig deep into this. Uh, it does require Ansible. Um, if you're familiar with Ansible, uh, at least the scripts that we've offered. So we, we have put a couple of scripts out on GitHub uh, that people can use to run Ansible and to be able to spin up uh, a Neon node. Um, skip through that. Um, I believe I've talked about this already, that we're going to, you know, I recommend dedicated nodes for sure, um, either your own or working with a third party provider. Uh, you want to know that they're locked down. Um, we've got, uh, these are the URLs right here for the two uh, GitHub repositories that we put out. Uh, so on GitHub, if you just search RPC pool, uh, you'll see the listing. And uh, there's two different scripts. 
uh, please know that these are not just copy and paste. These are here to kind of show you how it's done. Um, every system is different. Every environment is different. Uh, you will have um, the, uh, uh, you will definitely need to customize these things. So um, let's see, skip, skip. We're gonna do these upstairs if you guys want to. Skip, deploy, that's the fun part. And then uh, there's some funding things that happen afterwards. Um, again, super technical. I'm gonna skip a little bit of this for now. Um, as far as cost goes, so okay, let's talk about money, right? Um, through the Solana server program uh, that the Solana Foundation has, um, and I should even describe that to people uh, in case you're not familiar with it. Uh, the Solana Foundation had incredible foresight to reserve thousands of servers located around the world with major data center providers. And they put real money on the table, they guaranteed payment for thousands of servers whether or not the ecosystem uses them. Um, it's an amazing program. And uh, so if you're a member of the Solana ecosystem and if you need a server uh, f for Solana, don't use it for Ethereum um, or anything else, that uh, you can get it from this program. It costs roughly $900 per month, give or take, uh, and that's for the bare metal rental, the bandwidth, uh, and uh, co-location and all that. So depending on whether you do it yourself or if you use a third-party provider like us, you should expect a monthly cost of maybe $1,000 to $2,000 per month to, to run a Neon node. Um, and, uh, the, and then ideally and obviously, you're expecting this to be a profitable uh, venture and um, that you know, you're gonna make more in EVM fees, so. Um, you know, that's it for the slide part again, and this is a, you know, a Q&A workshop kind of session. Uh, it, uh, any other questions? Uh, and it can be about anything, to be honest. Running nodes, running validators, uh, uh, running Neon. Um, you know, go ahead and quiz us, please. If anyone has questions, I can run over with the mic, so. Shy crowd on a Wednesday. Yeah, okay. Last day of the conference. Yeah, hangovers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything to add? Yes. You're gonna finish it up? Great, yes, here we go. I want, uh, can you switch to next presentation? Uh, okay. Got Let's that. wait some time. Okay. Uh, uh, several words about uh, money matters. <laughs> uh, uh, I will skip this. Uh, this uh, back. Back. Okay. Um, uh, we understand that operators should uh, get profit. So uh, the neon VM. Uh, uh, so the neon EVM operator uh, executes the uh, transaction from user on the Solana cluster, and neon EVM user pays uh, to neon EVM operator, uh, and uh, it uh, uh, and the payment will covers all will covers all payments of neon EVM operator. Uh, let's see uh, how many money requires for transactions. A uh, neon transaction uh, requires to pay to check the signature of Solana, uh, of the Solana signature from neon operator, uh, the Ethereum signature from user, and, uh, uh, and uh, there should be the fee to neon VM governance. Uh, the total uh, price you can see, it's uh, 15,000 Lamberts for one transaction. Uh, also, we need to create some accounts on the Solana storage. Uh, you can read uh, uh, Solana documentation about rent economics. Uh, this is uh, the link to it. Uh, we use the first method. Uh, we uh, pay rent for two years, and uh, such accounts will not be removed uh, from the Solana storage. And uh, on the documentation, you can uh, read uh, how to calculate the total price of one byte in 
Solana storage. Okay, let's next. Uh, uh, the Ethereum-like account in Solana storage uh, requires two accounts. The first account with Ethereum-like information. It has transaction uh, counter. It has a uh, link to SPL token account with balance. And in SPL token account, uh, there is balance to pay for transactions. So the total size of uh, Ethereum-like account is about you can see the rent cost, you can see. Uh, so if uh, sole price is uh, $240, uh, the total price of one Ethereum-like account is about $1. Next. Uh, for example, if uh, an application want to deploy its EVM byte contract, uh, byte code contract to the Solana cluster, uh, we need to create several accounts. First account with Ethereum-like information, uh, with the transaction counter, uh, and uh, the SPL token account with balance. We uh, should deploy the uh, contract to the Solana storage and create the storage for information of the, uh, of the contract. Uh, uh, one uh, one record in our storage requires about uh, 90 bytes. So if we deploy a contract uh, with size about uh, 10 kilobytes, it requires about 20, uh, 24 and a half dollars at the current price. <coughs> the next, uh, if an user uh, transfer uh, simple tokens, uh, the cost will be less than one cent. If uh, this transfer will create an account, the price will be one dollar and thirty cents. Um, the next. Uh, currently, the average neon transaction requires about seven iteration. Uh, it's a Solana transactions within the neon transaction is executed. Uh, the price of this transaction is about two and a half cents. Uh, if, uh, this is a, if this transaction requires to create a new value in the Solana storage, the price will be about 17 cents. Okay, so about operator. Operator can set, uh, uh, can set up the fee for user transaction and this fee will will covers all his fees. <coughs> uh, in Neon Web3 proxy you have workers which can uh, execute one transaction in time and each worker requires to to create two accounts each of size uh, one uh, one hundred uh, one two eight kilobytes. Uh, so, uh, this, uh, this is price of these accounts, but uh, this is uh, souls can be returned back to the operator uh, when he wants to shut down his proxy. Uh, so, it's uh, only reserved uh, price. Okay, uh, for example, if you configure your uh, Neon Web3 proxy with two workers and you want to execute 60 PS, uh, it's a half of Ethereum throw spot. Uh, and you will set the fee to 10%. Uh, your, you will pay for user transaction about 44 souls, uh, and you will receive about four souls as revenue. There is uh, the link to the uh, small document with calculation which you can use to calculate how many money you require to execute transactions. Hey guys, I'm gonna, this is the first time I'm doing this, I'm yeah. so sorry, but I'm gonna sorry. have to cut you off. But these guys are just going right upstairs. They have a booth upstairs, the Neon Labs booth, and you can go and ask them a whole bunch of questions about the EVM and everything else. Okay. Awesome. Sounds awesome. Thank you so much. We have Thank somebody you. that needs to catch a flight because last day of conference. Yep. Thank Round you. Round of applause. Thank you.